there. Uh, yes, uh, someone else who I'm sure is looking forward to uh, the election, uh, either in July or October, is our next guest, Jennifer Westacott. The we should CEO bring her in now, the head of, of the Business Indeed. Council of Australia. She joins All us right. live from Canberra. Thanks for your company. Thank you. What do you think is the, are the chances of the government following through on company tax cuts? Uh, they've mooted it, but polling suggests, understandably, I suppose, that voters don't see the direct benefit from it, even though economists will tell us the economic growth benefit of it. How likely do you think it is in a tough electoral climate that the government will muscle up on this? Well, I mean, that'll be a matter for the government. We urge them to go down this path. And, and when we released our tax plan a few weeks ago, we said perhaps you could take it in stages, uh, do it over a five-year period, phase it in, as has been done in other countries. What I think is really the job of government is to explain to people that without that company tax cut, we have two very, very serious problems. We have, first of all, this bizarre construct of small companies paying one rate of tax, larger companies paying another. And secondly, we've got one of the most uncompetitive company tax rates in the world. That's bad for investment. That's bad for business investment, which is at a very, very uh, high low, uh, historic low. And it's bad for job creation. So, you know, this is our job. It's the job of the government to explain to people the importance of company tax cuts. And certainly when we talk to people, when we run focus groups, when we run uh, these virtual town halls, people understand the importance of companies being strong and of business investment. Uh, Jennifer Westacott, there has been though some uh, reports done by the Australia Institute that would argue that there's no correlation between corporate tax rates and uh, economic growth in OECD countries. And in fact, that com companies, countries, excuse me, with lower tax rates actually uh, enjoy lower standards of living. Uh, so that if we raise the company tax rate, what we risk is lowering our standard of living. Uh, do you think that the BCA and business is doing enough to counter that type of claim and to really sell to the voter the benefit uh, that you see uh, in uh, lowering the company tax rate? Well, I haven't got my head around that study in detail. The first thing to say is that GDP is a, is a factor of many things, mm. labour participation, labour productivity and so on. What we know is that company tax rates impact on productivity enormously, they impact on wages. So Ken Henry's uh, major study into tax said the, the bulk of the impact of high company taxes was on workers and on, on wages, on labour if you will. I mean we have to get out there, we have to make that case, that's why we've, uh, we've started a tax campaign, that's why we did a 10 year plan for tax reform which included company tax cuts. Uh, but you know it's very important that we explain to people that we need business investment to create jobs. We need business investment to create more productive workplaces, which means higher wages, and a company tax cut is a key part of that. I mean, the other issue, of course, is there seems to be a bipartisan view, Jennifer Westacott, that there should be company tax cuts. It's an issue Absolutely. of whether or not we pursue them. I haven't seen the details of that study that Christina refers to, but my guess would be that the reason that you've got a lower standard of living in some of these countries is because uh, underdeveloped or developing nations tend to be the ones that lower the company tax cut to try to drive investment towards their country rather than uh, you know, OECD type nations. But either that, that's way, absolutely spot on. Either way though, uh, Jennifer Westacott, the problem with this uh, continues to be electoral politics. I would argue it's the same reason that the GST got cut from the debate, stranding poor old Tom Connell and his prediction. Uh, you know, do you ever see us getting to a point where we're going to see these debates properly had? We had the head, the chairperson, I should say, of CEDA uh, basically lamenting similar things today in his National Press Club talk. Well, look, I think we have to, because what's the alternative? Um, you know, we've got to explain to people what the counterfactual of that is. If we don't get a company tax cut, you know, we, we continue to have very, very uh, low levels of business investment, notwithstanding interest rates are low. Uh, we're not competitive with the rest of the world. I talk to the CEOs of international companies who have to compete for capital at their global boards and they say very, very clearly that our rate of taxation for companies is one of the things that deters investment in this country. We need it, we need it for jobs. So I think we have to, organisations like mine have to say, you know, what is the sensible debate to have with the community here? And I think, to be frank, Peter, we, we take the community, uh, you know, for fools if we don't think they're up for these discussions. They are. We talk to people. We, we had, you know, 20,000 people on a call a few weeks ago. They get this. They get that companies create jobs. They are, our company tax rate's not competitive. They get that our income, personal income tax rate doesn't reward effort. They know this stuff. And we've got to treat them with respect as we come, uh, come into this uh, very long election campaign. 
But we did see last week uh, an Omni poll done for Sky News that showed uh, of the voters surveyed only about 3% identified cutting company tax rate as a, uh, a priority for the government. Uh, uh, nearly half said the government, the government should focus on fixing the budget and, and then uh, of the rest they were split between health and education services. Uh, so how do sure. you really turn that around because 3% is a pretty low base to start from. Sure, and I think, but 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 if you sort of say, what do people what do people get? They get the stuff about the budget, and that's absolutely right. We would say you've got to do the two things: you've got to get the budget under control, and you've got to get the tax system working better. And the point of getting the tax system working better is to get the economy to grow faster. People get that companies create jobs; they know that, and we've got to get out there and explain why a high company tax rate is an impediment to business investment, therefore it's an impediment to job creation. And as you say, Peter, both political parties understand this. They're both committed to a lower rate. In our plan that we released a few weeks ago, we tried to give a, a kind of staged and incremental approach to that so it was more manageable, so there wasn't a perception of a windfall gain. On the other hand, we've also got to do something about this sort of cutting down on multinational tax evasion. We've got to tackle that because that will build the community's confidence. I'm not pretending, Christina, this is easy, but I think the responsible thing for any government or any political party hoping to be in government is to lower the corporate tax rate to get that business investment going again. Well, my, my two cents worth is that the way to do this uh, is to convince people, to convince people, Jennifer Westacott, that, like it or not, if you want to fix the budget, lowering company tax rates is one of the ways you grow the pie and get there. Can we come back to you? We've got the Prime Minister about That's to stand fine. up. Yeah. We want, we've got to just take his speech, Jennifer Westacott, but we hope to come back to you after that. I want to talk about a range of other issues, including the effects test. But first, let's have a quick listen in to the Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull.